2 bromopentane is heated with potassium hydroxide in the alcoholic medium, what is the major product? So let's write down the 2 bromopentane. So this is a 5 carbon atom, 5 carbon alkene, pentane. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. This is our pentane, and 2 bromo means you have a bromine over here. And if you react with a potassium hydroxide, KOH, in alcoholic medium, and we know that we have discussed in our uh, previous videos that if you react the alkyl halide with the potassium hydroxide in alcoholic medium, so what do you get? Dehydrohalogenation occurs there. Okay, dehydrohalogenation means you know hydrogen uh, from the beta position and the bromine uh, is replaced, and so therefore this is an elimination reaction. So you get an alkene here. Okay, so you get an alkene with the potassium hydroxide in alcoholic medium, and if you take it aqueous medium, then you get a nucleophilic substitution reaction because hydroxide group in alcoholic medium is a strong base it acts as a strong base so that's why it actually takes the uh, you know the proton from the beta position we have here a beta position another beta position is over here so that's why in the alcoholic medium you get alkene as a product okay and but if it is aqueous medium hydroxide in polar medium acts as a better nucleophile right so it's nucleophilicity but in, you know increases in the aqueous medium so in aqueous medium it will replace the bromine there and you get an alcohol so therefore in the aqueous medium you get an alcohol okay so you get uh, an acid reaction in the aqueous medium but in alcoholic medium what do you get you get an alkene because dehydrohalogenation occurs and since we have two beta positions here over here and then over here we know that in the elimination reaction we always follow the Satzer rule means the Satzer rule says that the alkene which is more substituted you know, is more stable and that will be always the major product so that means hydroxide you know uh, hydroxide will take a you know a proton from this uh, beta position and you get an alkene like this right you get an so you get an alkene like this you have two you know pantoene and this is also pantoene now cis and the trans which one is the product okay cis uh, is not more stable than trans it is the trans which is always more stable okay so that means it is the trans product that is as a major product all right so the option c here in as in uh, one reaction the racemization takes place it is due to it is due to the uh, you know the inversion and the retention of configuration as we know that you know in the SN1 reaction the first step is always uh, the formation of a carbocation right in the SN1 mechanism you know this is a two-step process so when there is SN1 nucleophilic substitution reaction uh, first the bromine you know he will be replaced here and you get a carbocation in any kind of a as in one direction, halogen is lost as Br negative, so carbocation is the first, you know, uh, intermediate that you get. And we know that carbocation is planar because it has sp2 hybridization, right? Because of the sp2 hybridization of the carbocation is planar. Now these three groups attached to, uh, to this particular carbocation, they are basically in the one plane. And in the next step now, the nucleophile may attack on it, right? It may attack on the front side or on the back side. Chances are 50-50, right? So 50% possibility from here and the 50% possibility from here. If it attacks from exactly the same position where, you know, you had initially the bromine, then you will get a molecule with the retention of a configuration. The configuration will all, you know, that will, that will be retained, right? There will be no change. And if it attacks from the back side, then these three methyl groups, they will shift they'll flip to the other side so that means here you know in this uh, attack here in this attack it is the retention of configuration and here in this attack it is the inversion of configuration so when there is SN1 mechanism possibilities are both so both are you know 50% chances so that's why you get a 50% inversion and 50% retention of configuration that means you get a racemic mixture right so that is why here you can say the option D because both B and C, right? Retention of configuration occurs and inversion of configuration occurs there. All right. So let me take here an example. Suppose you have a, uh, you know, an, uh, a group like this. 
you got here four different groups attached to it all right so this is uh, let's say this is the hydrogen and this is the CH3 group and this is the C2H5 and this is chlorine all right now if you have a hydroxide group that you know uh, attacks on the carbon here and it follows the SN1 mechanism right so the chlorine will be replaced and if it is SN1 mechanism what do you get you get basically you get uh, here uh, uh, you know a carbocation as an intermediate and then you will get two types of you know products okay you will get two types of products 50% molecules will have the exactly the same configuration the only thing will be that you know you will replace the chlorine by the OH over here all right and now there are three you know or four different groups attached to the carbon so this is optically active compound okay another molecule will have a absolutely different configuration so there I can show the hydrogen from this side and the hydroxide to this side guys now over here the configuration is different right so 50% chances of this one so this type of a racemic mixture will have a zero optical rotation right optical activity in SN2 mechanism what happens there is complete inversion of configuration because you don't get a carbocation as an intermediate in the SN2 mechanism you know when you look at the SN2 mechanism it is a nucleophile that attacks from the back side of the you know the leaving group here in this reaction the chlorine is the, is the, is the leaving group so this hydroxide the nucleophile is going to attack to this carbon exactly at the 180 degree angle to the leaving group this chlorine is the leaving group here and you get a transition state right here this is the transition state and in this transition state basically this hydroxide approach this carbon very closely and it forms an intermediate there right so this carbon chlorine bond starts breaking and at the same time carbon hydroxide bond starts forming right so this is uh, the transition state and then what happens finally this chlorine comes off and you know the hydroxide forms a bond with this and these three groups which are attached to this particular carbon they flip to the other side right they flip to the other side so that means there is complete inversion of configuration okay so now you have a bromine here and if this is our nucleophile and you have to show the inversion of a configuration and guys there are different ways you know showing the inversion of configuration right so one of the uh, method of writing down a molecule with the opposite configuration is pretty simple you can exchange these two positions right okay if you exchange one pair of groups then the configuration is totally opposite okay so let's you know, you know say this is the c2h5 molecule and this is the ch3 and one group is above the plane the other one is below the plane right and now you have a and the nucleophile is this one this is uh, c3 I can take the hydrogen over here and the nucleophile that is this one okay yeah I can write it over here so oxygen then ch2 CH2 CH3 here right now they're here in this uh, you know uh, configuration if you simply exchange these two groups you know hydrogen over here is below the plane and if you take the nucleophile now over here okay so you exchange only these two groups then the configuration will be opposite we know that in the SN2 mechanism we have learned that the groups have an opposite configuration right because there is no carbocation formation rather there is a transition state which is formed and the nucleophile attacks from the back side of the nucleo you know, you know the leaving group and therefore there is a complete inversion of configuration right so there is complete inversion of configuration so configuration of the reactants and the products so doesn't match it is totally different so 100% inversion of configuration is uh, you know in the SN2 here in this uh, molecule again this is uh, a cyclic alkyl halide and if it follows the SN2 mechanism you're going to replace this chlorine by the CH3 oxy you know oxygen but in SN2 mechanism as I said that there is complete inversion of configuration there is complete inversion of configuration so that means if I write down the product I have to simply replace this you know uh, chlorine here I have to replace this chlorine by the CH3O right see this this carbon has a uh, two groups attached to it these are the two carbon atoms attached to it all right there's a one more group that is hydrogen right and now 
if I have to show the inversion of configuration, I will simply exchange the two groups. I'll put this chlorine blue to plane and hydrogen will be able to plane, right? So that means I will write down the, the substitution product, which is CH3O here, right? I will put it blue to plane now, because that is the substitution product. That will be the oxygen and the CH3. And you can show the hydrogen now able to plane, right? And we don't need, you know, in this uh, cyclic structures, we don't mention the position of the hydrogen because, you know, if you mention the position of one of the group, the other one is already understood. All right. You can also write it like this. You can also write it like this. Pretty simple. Simply mention the chlorine rather than chlorine. You have now oxygen and the CH3, a nucleophile, and that will be from the blue to plane. All right. Hope you got it. Thanks for watching the video. Bye for now.